The truth always hurts, but when it comes out that the government has literally been stealing from us, which we've known all along, doesn't make it hurt any less once we know the actual numbers. Let's get into it. Oh, yeah! What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Fringe. Uh, Arrive Can has been uh, a topic we've covered at great length on this channel. I've been covering uh, many talking points of the committee that is now ongoing into discovering where the $54 million, the astronomical $54 million has gone that went into developing the Arrive Scam app. And uh, it's been interesting so far when we've seen people like Larry Brock, uh, we've seen uh, Michael Barrett in there, we've seen uh, Garnet uh, Genus in there as well. Uh, I don't know if it's pronounced Genui, Genius, Genus. I, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, I've reached out to all three of their people, and um, we're still in talks, we're still in the works to try and get these guys um, on the channel to talk about what is going on. Um, as we can see by a video I'm about to show you, of course, these guys are out. The, the committees go late. They're working late. Uh, schedule conflicts are, are huge things in terms of availability uh, with these guys. So, again, I am in talks with their people. We They do have an interest in coming on the channel. Hopefully, uh, I can get them on shortly to talk about uh, maybe some details that we're not seeing in, in the broadcasts or, or what we can expect moving forward. Uh, but some new uh, discussions and some new, uh, I guess you could call it evidence, has come to light when it comes to Michael Bar uh, Barrett on uh, what's kind of going on in this investigation. And I wanted to share that with everybody because, um, you know, again, as I said in the intro, you know, we've known for a long time that out of this $54 million, um, there really is no doubt that Justin Trudeau was lining the pockets of his friends, the Liberal government has been doing that throughout the pandemic when it comes to um, contracts, we'll say, and, and how things go. Now, something like conflict of interest gets mentioned around in this video. And um, it's something, again, that I've discussed on the channel that I find it so um, convenient that Justin Trudeau, just before this committee began underway, uh, suddenly announces a separation from his wife, Sophie, uh, and again, there's no coincidences when it comes to how Justin Trudeau behaves. Again, just like the theft from Canadian people, uh, we've all known for years there's a separation between the two of them. We know that they weren't living in the same home. We know that um, there was a lot of shady things going on in the background of their marriage. Uh, when all of a sudden it's announced the day after the separation is announced that, hey, Sophie Trudeau has a communications company and she uh, is now exempt from Conflicts of Interest Act. Um, again, I find it convenient and it seems more like uh, this was the plan all along that as soon as investigations open, people start questioning where money is going. You have to make, you know, room to make exemptions for people and especially Justin Trudeau is going to protect uh, his former wife. Um, now, this isn't me saying that Sophie Trudeau was paid out of that $54 million. I just have my gut feeling, we'll call it. I <laughs> have my suspicions that she's been paid something because this is a telecommunications company. And of course, um, those kind of companies would have been active during the ArriveCan development um, and with what we're about to hear from uh, Michael Barrett, I'm, I'm curious um, if money went to Sophie, just how much went to her and, and what we're looking at in terms of damage. And, and furthermore, and again, I understand, guys, every time I report on these videos, uh, people say nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to come of this. Nothing's going to, you know, they're going to skate. They're going to go to jail. Um <sighs> or they're not going to go to jail, I should say. I have to have hope at some point that somebody is going to go to jail. Somebody's going to answer for what happened. Uh, this is being compared to being a larger scandal than the sponsorship scandal that went on under Jean Chrétien. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But let's, I'm sorry, I, I'm dragging it along. Let's take a listen to what uh, Michael has to say, and then we'll we'll discuss a little bit more. Just coming from the Standing Committee on Access, Information, Privacy, and Ethics, where we're looking at Trudeau's billion dollar green slush fund where we 
learned that the chair of the board, his handpicked chair of the board, uh, gave her own company more than $200,000 and then paid herself from that company $120,000. So again, I'm not sure if we're talking about $320,000 or if this was $120,000 paid out of the two hundred. Either way, uh, huge conflict of interest. Um, I just want to know who's going to jail. Meanwhile, the chair and the SDTC board and executive say that they disagree with the finding that they didn't follow conflict of interest rules. It's absolutely breathtaking. The willingness to take taxpayers for a ride and that Trudeau's government, which is responsible for oversight of SDTC, they're not willing to hold anyone accountable. The minister has a uh, has an individual who's the CFO for for the industry ministry and in the summer he said in leaked audio recordings that everyone was going to be fired that they'd lost confidence in the board and that the minister was going to be briefed in June but after that timeline in June we saw that suddenly no one was getting fired and they had confidence in Trudeau's hand-picked board chair and suddenly the revelations of these whistleblowers who provided a 300 page dossier into Trudeau's billion dollar green slush fund that there aren't any concerns or nothing worth letting anybody go after eight years of Justin Trudeau, we have a billion dollar slush fund run by his friends where there's no consequences for conflicts of interest and gross mismanagement. Look, the so-called fact-finding report that was done and is satisfying the minister and uh, Justin Trudeau only examined a handful of projects, of the hundreds of projects at SDTC, and of the, of the 20 that they looked at, they found more than $40 million in ineligible payments. $40 million, looking at just a handful of projects. So of course the Auditor General for Canada has launched an investigation, and while the minister and the board have stuck their head in the sands, Canada's Conservatives are going to hold Justin Trudeau to account for his billion dollar green slush fund. We're going to find out who got rich. So, again, Michael Barrett coming forward with, with this information. And again, when we look at ArriveScan, when we look at um, SEC, SEC or SNC Lavalin, sorry, uh, when we look at the Kielbergers and, and We Charity scandals, when we look at everything this government has done, I constantly question when we're talking about a billion dollar slush fund, how many millions or billions of dollars are Canadian taxpayers out at the hands of this so-called prime minister and his lackeys? Um, I sincerely hope that this fact finding committee figures out who got rich. And I certainly hope that somebody goes to jail. I don't, like, I want everybody to go to jail, but I'd like to see at least someone go to jail over this. I'd like to see some form of, of justice without being a complete miscarriage of the system. Um, I'm, I'm curious what, if anything, will again come out of it. But this is a lot of money we're talking about. This isn't, um, you know, a speaking fee or the egg con or, you know, money going to... Um, SNC Lavalin, we're, we're talking about a billion dollars of taxpayer money at a time when Justin Trudeau wants to quadruple carbon taxes, when he wants to tell you how terrible you are for staying warm in the winter, um, 
A prime minister who wants to tell you that unless you take his medical advice, you can't get on a plane uh, or across a border. It's disheartening. And it's again, I've, I talked in great length when we talked about the vote that took place to halt carbon taxes on home heating, how angry I was and how upset I was at what this government is. And I'll, I'll be honest, I'm out of steam. I'm out of steam because it's just one thing after another, after another, after another. And and, and what I'm kind of questioning is when are MPs that want our votes from the conservative party going to really push to make an example out of these people. We have laws in this country. Um, there's due process. <laughs> there has to be something that's going to happen. Now, I'm not saying that Michael Barrett or, or, or you know, um, Brock or Larry Brock or, or any of these guys aren't doing anything. But what I'm saying is, is that if all of this takes place and nothing comes out of it, as much as I think that Pierre Polyev is a much better answer in terms of leaders than Justin Trudeau, are we going to see this kind of behavior when Pierre's people are in, are, in, are in office? Not calling out Pierre as a corrupt politician. I'm saying that if Justin Trudeau finds all these loopholes to skate, are conservatives just going to be more careful when shuffling money around to say, hey, we can still do all the things those guys did. It's We just make sure we're a little more careful so we don't get caught this time. When you look at what happened with Jean Chrétien, if you think that the sponsorship scandal was the only nasty thing he did that that it's questionable on ethics, I would beg to differ. Um, scandals have been going on since the creation of government, and they'll continue to go on. Anybody who's going to say that someone's going to get into office and do everything by the numbers, by the book, uh, that they're never going to do a backdoor deal, that they're never going to pad somebody's pockets. Those people are completely out of touch and oblivious as to how government actually functions. And and I'll be a realist when I just say, um, if, if justice isn't administered in this situation, what's to stop future governments, whether they're conservative, liberal, NDP, bloc, any, what's to stop them from from doing the same thing and just being more careful? the next time. Uh, on the arrive can end of things, uh, we're seeing Garnet, Gar, Garnet Genus. I'll just say Genus. I know I'm mispronouncing that. I apologize. Uh, I'm, I'm more than willing to bet it's Jen. We, uh, talking about who's at fault here. Don't forget when we're talking about a billion dollar slush fund, but we're also talking about, um, a placement company. A company that's literally a middleman taking $11 million of taxpayer money to do nothing with it. Virtually nothing with it. They just called another group of people and said, hey, you want a job? Here's what the job is. Go work for these people. $11 million out of $54 million that went to an app. And, and I'm not supposed to speculate that Sophie Trudeau had her hands in any of this money that's floating around? Come on. Come on. Let's take a listen to what has to be said here. Thank you, Chair. GC Strategies clearly got a very good deal here, so it really matters in terms of getting to the bottom of this who made the decision to hire GC Strategies. Now, I understood in your opening t uh, statement, both of you said that Min Doan was responsible for that decision. Is that, was my understanding correct? Yes. Yep. You're both nodding. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Doan very clearly and very explicitly testified before this committee uh, when he appeared on October 24th uh, that they were investigating who, trying to find out who, and to his knowledge, they weren't aware who. Uh, so to be clear, in, based on your testimony, Mr. Doan was lying when he appeared before the committee. I don't understand, uh, Mr. Chair and honorable members, how they could be investigating for a year who made the decision on a rive can. It's, it's quite clear. And if they had asked anybody on our team, they would have said the same thing. Was Mr. Okay, so right there is where we're starting to see the real... The, people are starting to throw people under the bus. And we're going to see that heat up, I think, as these questions go on. Because, again, you've, you've got guys like Michael Barrett here asking these questions. Uh, you got guys like Larry Brock, who who's sitting off to uh, to uh, Michael's right there. Um, you, you've got guys, and don't forget that 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 Brock is is a former prosecutor. 
He's a lawyer. He knows how to dance around these questions. He knows how to get answers. All these guys know how to get the answers they want. Guys are starting to throw each other under the bus. If they expect anybody to believe these the, these answers anymore, again, I, I hate dancing around the same thing of saying, look, we all know it's guilty. Just, just admit it. Just come out with it. Um, but that statement right there is saying, look, hey, it's not us. It's these guys. You know, they're telling uh, they're telling you guys that they have no idea who made decisions, who decided where money was going, um, that they'll have to look into it. Do you remember that in the last week when we did a video talking about that? They said, well, we're going to have to look into it. It's going to take some time for us to investigate our own offices as to who made the decisions on what dollars went out. It's all just saving face. It's all just playing the typical question period games is what I call them, where where you dance around the question, you never really give a solid answer, and taxpayer dollars continue to get wasted because let's remember, these inquiries aren't free. They cost a lot of money. Mr. Firth, honest and truthful in all of his presentation and responses to committee based on uh, what you know. No. Was Mr. I'm going to circle back to that. Was Mr. Doan truthful and no. fulsome and honest? Was Mr. Osofsky truthful and honest in his presentation to this committee? I couldn't say more than I don't know that he really represented or stuck up for the people that was, I would have expected him to. Was Ms. O'Gorman truthful and fulsome and honest? I wouldn't think so. You sort of imply that Mr. Doan uh, wanted to make you the fall guy for what happened here. Um, would that be a, a correct interpretation of your version of events, that, that, um, that he made a decision um, and that someone somewhere decided that you two were going to be the ones made, made to wear this and, and therefore um, not supported by the department and and made to appear responsible for the decision. Is that your version of events? Yes, Mr. Chair. I felt incredibly threatened on that phone call with Mindon on October the 28th. Uh, I talked to my old supervisor and then my boss on Monday and Tuesday morning uh, following that. I think Mr. Utano can tell you that he had a very similar experience with Mr. Doan as well. So uh, you had also referred to a, a, a conversation that was relayed to you, and maybe it was the same one in which uh, it was reported that Minister Mendicino wanted someone's head on a plate. Can you just explain further why and for what uh, and whose, whose head he wanted? That, that was my discussion, and that was the day that Mindon threatened me. Uh, the discussion started off with Mindon telling me that uh, within the CBSA there was a lot of work going on to prepare for OGO. This is almost a year ago, yeah. and uh, I believe Mr. Mendicino was not happy. Mr. Mendicino wasn't there when Arrive Can kicked off and when all of this was going on, but there was a lot of news about Arrive Can. Min was worried that either he or Jonathan Moore were going to get fired, so he was talking about somebody's head on a platter, and he said because Jonathan Moore had made a whole bunch of mistakes from an accounting perspective talking about how much Arrive Can cost, it could go his way or it could go Mr. Doan's way because Mr. Doan was the CIO at the time. And then he turned, turned, we were on the phone, but he stopped the conversation, and he just said, you know, Cam, if I have to, I'm going to tell the committee that it was you. Right. He offered me the opportunity to say that it was Mr. Utano or tell Mr. Right. Doan that it was Utano and myself, uh, to which I said, if you do that, I will have to respond, and we ended the conversation. That night is the night that I wrote him the notes. I stayed up until about 3 o'clock in the morning trying to figure out how I could find some way to meet in the middle, and that's why the notes were written exactly that way, so that Mr. Doan could come to this committee and present without so having... So you're referring to the email you sent, and I was going to ask you about that. So, so with Okay, so so I don't want to drag this video on too long, folks, but but again, um, look, this is what we're going to start to see in these, in these committee hearings, is that, um, you know, these guys are all willing to help each other out when they're lining each other's pockets. We hear about Marco Mendicino saying, I want somebody's head on a platter. Why? Well, we all see what happened to Marco. Uh, he had to, he had to resign. He had to step down. The pressure surmounted too much in, on, on all of his issues that he had to save face and walk away. These guys are prepared to throw whoever they need to under the bus in order to secure their own necks. And while again, they're all buddy, buddy when they're lining each other's pockets, I think this is about where things are going to get very interesting. 
Um, as the committee continues, it's going to be interesting to see these guys continue to throw each other under the bus until we get a viable answer. Now, I'm not certain I'm going to sit here and say everything that came out of that testimony is factual there, but it's starting to show the desperation to say, hey, I had nothing to do with this. If they came for answers and asked who was investigating it to what money went anywhere, we could have given them an answer. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, Hydra's eating their own heads is what's going on here. And it's, again, it's going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out. Now, no matter what happens, no matter what comes of this, what's very damning and what's very disturbing is that the government has been stealing from Canadians. The government, this isn't just wasted money. This isn't just uh, a bad policy that cost taxpayers a bunch of money and didn't take off or, or had issues and they had to, you know, uh, 67 it and, and get rid of it. We're talking about stolen money. We're talking about money that is sitting in somebody's account somewhere that they're living the high life off of, off of hardworking Canadians and their tax dollars. Somebody in these scandals, if not a large handful of people need to go to jail. And we need to see that. Again, I'm going to take devil's advocate and say that I side with my, my community in the comments where most people say, hey, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to come out of this. My concern, again, ladies and gentlemen, if nothing comes of this, how do we know that this isn't going on in the background with another government? Um, how do we know that our tax dollars are safe at the end of the day? And what is the best solution to this problem, uh, to securing those funds? Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Uh, if it's your first time here, make sure to hit the subscribe button. I hope this long video has earned your subscription. Um, join us tomorrow on the channel. Uh, I'll have an interview with a good friend of the channel, Marty Up North, who's coming by to talk about uh, Alberta's pension plan and maybe some of the uh, the uh, new announcements from Danielle Smith to restructure Alberta Health Services. It's going to be real interesting to hear what he has to say about that. And then next week, keep in mind, I will be sitting down again with Premier Danielle Smith, speaking of... Uh, Madam Premier, she'll be coming in to visit on the channel and talking about the Alberta Pension Plan as well and uh, some of the issues that are going on with the uh, climate crisis in terms of oil and gas and what we're going to do with our emissions targets. I'm looking very forward to those interviews. I hope you guys do too when they hit the channel uh, both Friday morning and next week. Uh, again, turn on your bell for notifications so that you're notified every time new content drops on this channel. Uh, just to keep in mind, usually Sundays we do a live stream here on the channel uh, where we go over everything that's happened in the week prior and then uh, talk about everything coming up in the week ahead. Due to a scheduling issue, uh, we'll have to do the stream this Saturday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Time aside uh, if possible, uh, keep your eye on our communities tab. If for some reason I cannot do the stream on Saturday, we will do a makeup stream Monday night. Uh, and again, my apologies, uh, for something that, uh, I just simply cannot avoid. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll catch you on the next one.